talking about the group, we had a, we had a. You, you talked about your speed relative to the other scholars. Um, I just wonder. I, I've, I've read somewhere you, you you're a, a sub six two k on the ergo, but not not a not a big puller on the ergo compared to some of your teammates. No. What what is your PB? Yeah, so we we roll a lot on uh, RP threes now, so we we don't we don't use the static concept two anymore. Oh, just just tell me why why that is because that's quite interesting to you know when you see your quadruple rowing along so beautifully. I mean, I guess the two are more simpatico. Uh, I don't know if if there's a. I I just think when we're when you're doing uh, three times thirty minutes on 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 an ERC, uh, it feels differently when you do it on a on an RP3 than on a static. I think uh, it's much more doable on the, on the RP3 than on the static. Uh, so it's 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 for me it's it's more 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 of the same feeling to rowing than a static ERC. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, who are the big guys in your crew on on the RP3? Who, who pulls the good scores? Well, we're actually really close, uh, but I think Tony is the fastest. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and do you have a do you have a session on the RP3? You know that you really you know a very very hard session that you feel a bit apprehensive about, or you you don't look forward to. What's your worst session on the on the rowing odometer? Uh, yeah, I think I think we only use the use the RP3 for um, for just uh, steady state rowing uh, so the only <laughs> the only session I'm not looking forward to is the 2k yeah <laughs> uh, yeah 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 it, is my is my video still working because yours is uh, still yeah my it is good all oh, right I don't see you moving anymore um, I will, I will, I will move down. I will try and move down to um, a better internet signal. I think. Hmm. Can you still hear me, though? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. It's perfectly okay. clear. Only, only your image is not moving, but it's okay. fine. Um, okay. So, um, w one of the things we were we were talking about before. Um, we, we came on air was um, your your great friend and crewmate um, Dan Blue who passed away um, ten years ago um, and I know that was a shock as I heard it I think the Dutch was it when the Dutch team were going to Seville or something on a training camp and, and the news came out I can't remember if that was the occasion but um, it's been something that I guess you, you've had to come to terms with, and I know you've spoken a lot about it in, in interviews. Um, he, he must have been a great guy. Yeah, so uh, I think when you're into juniors, um, you're dreaming about uh, about the big things and the big goals in, in, in rowing, what you can achieve. So uh, you're... you're, you're you're talking about uh, going to the Olympics or winning gold medals, um, and you're making plans for the future. And we were a double. Uh, we were actually in a double in 2006. So we went to the Coupe de la Jeunesse. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in 2006, we went to the Coupe together, and so afterwards we had big plans to stay in the double and uh, be friends and be great partners. Yeah. Uh, then he got injured. So in 2007, I had a different partner. But in 2008, we were back in the quad again. And in 2009, we were in the quad together. And we uh, we were thinking about having a great future. Only uh, in 2010, it was after the under 23 championships in uh, in Belarus. Um, we came back, and then we heard the news uh, the next morning. It was a, a night, the night we came back from uh, from Brest. Yeah, yeah. And and I and I I guess um, I, I guess that that is something which you you obviously have um, come to terms with now in terms of you know it's a long it's over ten years ago it's it's a decade. Um, what what impact did that have on on you in terms of um, you know? 
personality or as, as an oarsman? Yeah, it, it had a great impact. I think, uh, well, not 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 on my personality or being an oarsman, but it just uh, at that moment, just what I said. You you made plans together, and and you are. He was like a brother to me. So uh, yeah, you're you, th you think about how could, how could this happen and, and what does it mean? Um, yeah, so I had to. I think I had to get back into rowing again. For uh, that was really hard. I think it was. Uh, I I I was in the double with Freek Roberts um, in 2011 and 2012 at the under 23s. And it was a, uh, it was a, that we were also, so Freik and me were also in the quad in 2008 with Dan. Yeah. So uh, we really, uh, yeah, uh, we, we just, we just arranged that we, we should go together in a boat and just have, uh, have try to have fun and in rowing again and just see what, what happens if we go to under 23, if we are able, have, have good speed enough to go to the under 23s, we will go. And otherwise, we will stay at home, just have fun in rowing and see what happens. Mm. And that really helps to to have more fun again and, uh, and stay in rowing, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I guess the quadruple is, is the quadruple that you're in now. Is that a boat that you can have a lot of fun in, or is it quite serious? How how do you how, do you, how does rowing in that quadruple feel for you? <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, we are quite serious, but uh, I can also have a lot of fun. <laughs> are you the most fun one in the quadruple? No, well, that's hard to tell. I don't know. Um, um, yeah. I have a question. We'll, we'll look at some of your races in the quadruple, but it's it's a kind of long question from Tony Brook, who was uh, a world champion with New Zealand in All the right. men's eight. And, and he asks, he says, um, what is it about sculling in a top quality quadruple boat at your level um, where more than any other boat type, once the crew really frees up their bodies, relax and flow together with immaculate timing of all moving parts and precise power application, the boats come to life and there is incredible, the speed increase seems in some way disproportionate to the energy being applied. I don't know if you got all of that. Yeah. But the quadruple is a very special boat, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, magical it's so it's so technical uh and when you're all together at the same moment it, it's 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 just feels the same as as he just described there in the question it's just yeah. uh, uh you you're 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 about to fly when you're when you're 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 really giving a lot of effort and you know when you cross the finish line you have you have given a lot of effort but during the race you're just in such a flow uh that you don't you don't feel it that way Wow. Uh, uh, how, how do you, I, I know you work together, is it with Ilko Mihurst and um, Diedrich Simon? How, do, how does that coaching partnership work for you? Yeah, really well. We really enjoyed it. Um, they've also been uh, in the 2018, they've been our coaches. Uh, and 2017, I guess also. But then I wasn't in the court, so... But uh, yeah, they they really know how to um, uh, how can I say it? They have different roles and they know what the, what the other is, the strengths and weaknesses are. So um, can they, you can you give an example of how they have different roles and how that helps to make the quad the boat it is? So Ilko has a lot of overview and he, he he knows he knows in in general what we have to do and uh Dietrich Simon is more on the feeling like his experience from his own rowing and on the spot uh in the moment uh coaching yeah that's really interesting i remember that dutch quad from 2017 because i think they led the final yeah. of the world championships for a long way yeah, um, and they could have won that race, I guess. Um, but but they 
in the end, they, they finished, I think, fifth or something um, towards the back of the field. Um, but then in, in 2018, you had the same coaches, but you were uh, only fifth in the final of um, the World Championships in Plovdiv. So yes. I, I, I don't understand why, you know, 2018 was like it was and then how come you were so fast in 2019? Yeah, it, I've been amazed as well. Uh, but when you when you look at the season we had in 2018, I think we showed a lot of good speed uh, during the season. We had a, a lot of World Cups where we had good speed, and in, the, in just as you mentioned in 2017, they were ahead in uh, before 15. I think 1500 meters, they still were ahead. Yeah, yeah. But in Plovdiv, we were still in second place at 1500 meters. Oh, were you? It was kind of similar result i think uh where we're in the last 500 meters the old the, the, the new zealand crew the ukraine and um and australia crew they just passed us in the last 300 meters i think and we were all so close to the medals that it was uh yeah, really frustrating yeah 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 but i think yeah i actually i was thinking about it and i, I already i already thought maybe that you should ask this question but i was thinking about it beforehand and I, I I was thinking maybe because the the Polish crew also did the, we, we, it was funny because the Polish crew was sixth in 2018 and we were fifth and now we were first and second so <laughs> we both had, had the same uh, improvement. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. we yeah. we also did both. We had one crew change, uh, one member of the crew uh, we changed. Uh, so I, I think we had a, a similar progression actually, but it was uh, yeah, kind of funny to see that we were fifth and sixth in 2018 and now first and second. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we we were talking about um, that improvement from 2018 to 20 yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2019, and um, the thing is, it's not just a small improvement because you you were yeah. unbeatable, you know, for a, a couple of. Well, at least two races that I saw you in 2019. So, it, you know, what what was it that made the big difference? Yeah, so uh, we evaluated 2018 together. Uh, so we said to each other, yeah, there was a pretty good, pretty good year. We had some pretty decent results. We showed good speed. And uh, I think we we're really close to the medals. Um, so we were thinking, OK, wh what should we do to get to the podium and then we just analyzed a bit what the other others were doing in the field uh, and we just I think we saw that the Italian crew won in uh, 2018 in Plovdiv yeah they, they only showed in three races during that season so they showed in um, in Leeds at the World Cup 2 Europeans and the Worlds and they all won that races so maybe we we all we we rode five races and then the World Cups uh, in Leeds and in Lutzen we did pretty well, but the Europeans and the, and the Worlds we were fifth. So we thought maybe we should focus more on uh, performing in the Europeans and Worlds and the other races uh, more for experience, but not not really. To perform there at the best uh, as we can, could be because we got beaten in uh, in Rotterdam at the World Champ of World Cup. Yeah, uh, that wasn't that wasn't a proper race though with the conditions, was it? It was, but uh, still, it, it, it I think it showed that we were not as fully prepared as we were at Europeans and Worlds yeah. as we were in uh, in World Cup three, and uh, I I think that it made a difference in our physique, but also uh, yeah. The conditions were also unfair, yeah. Dirk, I've, I've got a, I've got some film of you. I think it's on YouTube. You've probably seen it of your quad in training. Is, is would you be able just to, if you can see the pictures, uh, would you be able to talk about the, um, you know, what it is that you're, you're looking at and, yeah. and how the boat's moving? Yeah, no problem. So if I, is that something you can see? Yeah. So this is in uh, Afis. Yeah. 
I've I've never seen this video. <laughs> Is there uh, kind of pause at the finish? I'm sorry. Is there a pause at the finish? Um, no, not not intentionally, but it is maybe. Yeah. And what about the way you put the blades in the water? Um, what about it? Well, it seems it seems very gentle. Um, it seems uh, quite sympathetic with the boat. That I remember I did a quadruple skull um, a long time ago, and I think my catches were very direct and hard, and uh, they weren't correct for the, for the way the boat moves. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I think Kuhn is really uh, good at... Good doing that at stroke and uh, uh, Tony is really well in 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 giving it the best uh, support he can uh, I, we also race with me in uh, in stroke position sometimes oh do and you how does how does the how does that feel yeah really different because it, they it, cool, yeah we have a different style so you get a different different bro oh. but uh, what is different about your style I think it's pretty similar, but I can, I can, um, I think my my strengths are just to uh, perform well and support the guy in front of me. So that's why I'm always in bow. In the bow seat. <laughs>